All right. So again, thank you for joining us today for our Discover session. Today's session features two programs, drama and music. I am Marjorie Dawkins. I am the Assistant Director of Pre-College Enrollment Management. And I will just introduce the team members that we have here this evening. We have Meg Pryor. Meg, if you would like to wave. Uh, she's the Assistant Director of Pre-College Student Affairs. From drama, we have Val Haley. If you want to wave, Val. And then Maria Stoy is also with drama. And then from music, we have Alex Maithler. There we go. Marthler. I always mispronounce that, don't I, Alex? I'm so sorry. <laughs> It's all okay. Okay. <laughs> Alex is very forgiving of me. My bad pronunciation. In today's session, we're going to start with a brief overview of Carnegie Mellon's pre-college programs. Then you're going to hear individually from today's featured programs, drama and music. Next, you're going to hear about the student experience outside of the classroom, because that is an important component of the pre-college programs. And that's going to be followed by a review of the application process and deadlines, and then we'll end with a Q&A. We will have a large group Q&A, but then we're going to do breakout rooms. So you can jump into a breakout room with the particular program of interest. So before we begin, I'm going to ask a few favors of you. If you could please stay on mute during the presentations. This just helps reduce background noise. Could you also please just write down your questions as we move through the presentation, or you can put them in the Q&A portal. Um, you should see it on the Zoom screen. It's generally right next to the chat icon. It's a little Q&A icon. You can put your questions in there. We'll make sure you get answers. If for some reason you don't um, get the answers to all of your questions tonight, I'll be giving you my email. You please make sure you email me them and I will get you any information you need. Then lastly, um, my last favor, after this session, you're gonna receive a survey and we would love to have your feedback on this, this session. So please consider filling it out while it's fresh in your mind. So I'm gonna begin with why pre-college. So why do pre-college at all? At a very basic level, it is just great practice for the college application process. And our pre-college uh, process is very similar to the college application process intentionally. We believe that by experiencing it now, you will be better prepared and it will give you more confidence when you do all these things at the undergraduate level. We are really sort of like a mini college experience. You're also gonna have an immersive experience on a college campus through our pre-college programs. A campus can be daunting for the first year undergraduate student. So exposure to the campus now is really impactful. Impactful. It really unveils the mysteries of campus and it helps you begin envisioning what college life might look for you. You're also gonna be experiencing a college classroom and its expectations and they really are different than the high school expectations. So exposure to them now is gonna help you better understand the atmosphere and pace of a college class. Pre-college is also gonna allow you to test drive your current interests and passions before making that big commitment at the college level. Or maybe you're curious about a field of study and there's no way that, to get exposure to it where you're at now. Well, pre-college is where you can do that. And all of that just helps inform your decisions at the college level. You're also gonna build invaluable life skills, time management, advocacy, uh, communications, among so many others. And then lastly, you're going to meet students from different backgrounds and locations, and you will, I promise you, you will make lifelong friends through your shared experiences and interests. So those are just a few reasons why the pre-college experience is valuable in general, but why Carnegie Mellon, right? There are other choices, so why us? Because here you're going to experience college life on our absolutely beautiful campus, under the instruction of our world-renowned faculty and staff, with a group of curious, like-minded peers that are gonna help you discover more about yourself and your future. So I'm just gonna give you an overview, sort of a high-level overview of pre-college programs first. You're gonna hear us refer to the Office of Pre-College Programs. Meg and I, we are on that team. We're the team that manages the enrollment, the logistics, the student affairs portions, really everything that is outside of the academic classroom. 
then each specific academic program is run by one or more program directors, and they manage the academic portion, the curriculum of the program. So that would be Alex, Val, and Maria. When you look at pre-college programs as a whole, we offer 12 different academic programs. Three are at no cost to the participant. We call these fully funded merit-based programs. I will point those out in a moment. And then the other nine, they are paying programs, but they all have full scholarships available to eligible students. Our programs vary in length from three to six weeks, depending on the program. Um, this evening, drama is six weeks. Music is offered in both three and six weeks. And we enroll about 750 students that will be rising 11th and 12th graders during the summer of 2024. So next summer during the programming. So that means if you're filling out an application now, you should currently be a sophomore or a junior. We do also require you to be at least 16 years of age at the time of programming. And that would start June 2020, uh, June 22, 2024. And that was a mouthful, so many twos there, excuse me. So you would need to be 16 by June 22nd, 2024. We do offer both residential and commuter options, but most of our students actually do stay um, with us residentially. Our students are gonna come from all over the country and in fact, all over the world. So briefly, I'm gonna run through all of our programs. Um, just so that you're aware. If you have specific programs about or questions about these other programs other than drama and music, please reach out to me after the presentation. So first we have AI Scholars. That is our first fully funded merit-based program. Then we have Architecture, Art, Computational Biology, CS Scholars. That is our second fully funded merit-based program. Then we have Design, Drama, Music, National High School Game Academy, Summer Academy for Math and Science, that is our third fully funded merit-based program, Summer Session, and Writing and Culture. Again, if you have questions about the other programs, please feel free to reach out to me privately. Now I'm gonna hand, um, hand it over to Drama so they can talk about their program a little bit. Hi. So hi, I'm Val Haley. Uh, Maria and I are the associate directors of the drama program. Um, we have been doing it together for 13 years. Maria's been doing it almost twice that long, but we've been doing it as a team for 13 years now. Um, <clears throat> the head of our program is Robert Ramirez, and he also is the director of the pre-college program. But since Maria and I have been doing it so long and Robert is new, we kind of do the nuts and bolts. So. Um, we're happy to answer any questions that you have. The first thing that I would tell you is that what makes our drama program different from other drama programs that you may be researching right now is that we're focused on process, not product. So we do not do a production at the end of the year or at the end of the term. We, um, we do a mock audition so that you can take all of the skills that you've learned about auditioning for college, uh, monologues, music, whatever your interest is, We'll be working on all of those skills while you're here. And then at the end, you get to do a mock audition for the faculty, the acting performance faculty, uh, as if you were really ready to audition for college. And we found that uh, this really makes the students leave here feeling very confident about that process, which is kind of a big unknown when you guys are in the position you're in. I imagine if most of you are here, then you're hoping to apply for college for a drama uh, program in your senior year. And we hope that when you leave here, you'll leave uh, ready to do that and feel confident with doing that. I also wanted to mention that um, when we talk about uh, the different tracks here, we call them options. So you can choose to either be in the musical theater option you can choose to be in the design production option or in the acting option. The acting and MT program run pretty much together uh, and have some crossover. The DP, the DP program runs pretty much separately, but we'll get into that in more detail later. I'm gonna pass it off to Maria to talk a little bit more about our students. Um, one of, Another thing that makes our program different from some of the other summer programs is that we don't have an audition to get into our program because we really believe that we have a lot to offer students who are beginners as well as students who are much more advanced. 
Um, our faculty is ready to meet you where you are. So when you come into the program, you know, don't be afraid you have too much experience or you don't have enough experience. Um, we're going to meet you where you are and go from there and know that when you come out of the program, you're going to be well prepared for your college audition or your portfolio review if you're looking at a design production program. Um, we really want students to come in, you know, with an open mind and folks who are really willing to listen and to learn and to be open to the experience, not only of the classes, but also the student life and everything that the program has to offer. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about our design production classes right now. Uh, David Bovers is the head of our uh, summer design production program. And I can put his email in the chat right now. So if you're interested in design production, um, and you have any specific questions that we don't cover tonight, feel free to email David and he'll be able to help you out. Um, our classes in design and production um, vary a little bit year to year uh, based on the faculty that we have available. Uh, but the classes that we had last year included science of scenery, costume production, technical production, drawing, basic design, stage and production management, lighting design, fabrication technology, I'm still not entirely certain what that is, and <laughs> dramaturgy. Um, those classes usually run two days a week. There's also uh, Fridays are sort of special topics, so you'll do things like properties, fabrication, and specific um, lighting techniques. And they also offer a class in applying to college that's taught by several of the design production faculty. So they will help you cover all the aspects of the college application process, including how to prepare a portfolio um, and how to navigate the application process overall. And the classes for the design production students usually run from 9 a.m. to 5.30 and there's a lunch break every day. Um, the classes don't have a lot of flexibility um, as far as time. So there's not a lot of opportunity for students to take um, electives outside of the program, um, like a music elective or a class in the summer session. There's just not a lot of space in the schedules to do that. Same thing for the acting musical theater students. There's not a lot of space in the, pro in the class schedule to try to take something outside of that. And Val's going to talk a little bit about the acting musical theater program. Sure. So I mentioned earlier that there's some crossover in that program. Um, those classes will run from nine to six every day, also with a lunch break. On Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you'd follow the same schedule. And on Tuesday and Thursday, you follow this, a different schedule. Um, the blocks are a little longer on Tuesday, Thursday to accommodate only meeting twice a week. So the classes that everyone will take in the performance side are um, acting and um, audition, acting for the camera, which used to be a workshop and has morphed into an elective. And then from there into one of the most important classes that we have since COVID came along and we did a virtual session and realized just how important it was for all of you to learn about acting in front of the camera. And uh, everyone in the program, including the design production students, takes dramaturgy. Um, and then it splits from there. So the acting students would take movement, voice and speech, and Shakespeare, while the musical theater students would take ballet dancing, jazz dancing, and song coaching, the singing class. So all of the actors and MTs can also choose one elective to complement their uh, required classes. Uh, they can choose from directing, dramatic writing, text analysis, musical theater repertory, tap, improv, or history of musical theater. Um, all of that together leaves you with about one open period the whole time. You get either one free period on Tuesday, Thursday, or one free period on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, depending if you're in the acting program or the MT program. A lot of people choose to take private voice lessons, which is an additional fee. They would have five one-on-one -on -one lessons with one of our voice faculty, and those are often scheduled during your off period or in the evenings during your dinner break or after in the evenings, because we don't really schedule a lot. We, we firmly believe that when six o'clock on 
Friday night rolls around, you should get out of the building and go explore the city and have some fun and do your homework and get some sleep and do all the things that you're not going to get to do Monday through Friday when you're running from class to class. So on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights, we offer a variety of workshops, not every night, but maybe two a week. Um, and I can talk to you more in the breakout rooms later about workshops, but those are just completely voluntary, little extra things. Uh, some of those include how to uh, applying for college, so you can get a little study from our, we'll have our academics person come from the School of Drama to, to speak about how to apply. And then we have lots of extra things that I can talk to you about later, but those are all optional. So you have the choice of either spending nine till 1030 and curfew in the building, or you can actually uh, go home by six. So uh, that's that's pretty much what the day looks like for a performance student. Pass it back to Maria to talk about our faculty. So a lot of our pre-college faculty are regular faculty in the, the undergraduate drama program. Um, it'll vary from year to year. Um, last year's faculty in the acting musical theater track included Gary Logan in voice and speech, Claudia Banak in singing, Tony McKay in acting, and Tomei Cousin as a jazz dance teacher. Um, we also, um, our design production faculty is also a lot of them, most of them actually come from our uh, undergrad faculty, um, including Susan Sue in basic design, David Bovers in technical production, and Misa Wei in stage management. Um, we also have a lot of talented, creative teachers and professors from other local colleges, including some amazing dance faculty from Point Park University, um, faculty from Pitt and from Seton Hill. And we also have a few um, working professionals who come back to the city summer after summer to work with us in our free college program, including um, one of our alum, Kat Wilson, who came back at least last year to uh, teach the lighting design class for us. Sorry, I have two screens going. I lost my cursor for a minute. <laughs> um, and I just want to talk about who actually comes to this program, what kind of student. As Maria said earlier, we uh, don't care if you are a beginner or if you've been tap dancing since you, since you were five years old. There is something here for everyone. There should be no feeling of competition here since we're not having a show at the end. No one is competing for roles. You're all just here to learn and you're all coming from the same place. Uh, they'll, your skill level is, is not really important. Um, that, that's what we want to give you is skills. So that's why you come. Um, the people that are interested in pursuing a degree in theater in college are mostly the students we get. And um, what do they get out of it? I would say that there's probably a small percentage that come and decide that maybe performance isn't what they thought it was going to be or what they really want, but they still love theater. So we try to give you some exposure through electives and workshops to other avenues like dramaturgy or, or directing. Where if maybe performance is what you thought it would be in a college environment, you could maybe pursue another avenue. We have, um, everyone takes dramaturgy classes, I mentioned, and our teachers will often identify students that they'll encourage that show an aptitude for writing and, and, and language. And uh, we probably had over the last 13 years, 25 students in the dramaturgy program that started as pre-college actors or MTs. And they came here to CMU. Uh, as you probably know, if you've been doing any research, it's pretty tough to get into CMU as an actor or a musical theater student. But there are other avenues that are a little more open and a little more possibility to still have the CMU experience if you were interested in applying something like that. We also find that the other percentage of those students uh, double down on their commitment to wanting to be a professional. And they find that the skills that they get here really, really help them with that and prepare them for that. Um, We've had uh, students that come out of our program. We used to ask them to send us where they got accepted to college and they were colleges all over the country. They, they got into NYU, they got into Point Park here and they got into uh, Cincinnati or Michigan or all these excellent programs all over the country. And even we have a percentage that get into Carnegie Mellon. 
Um, it's happened before. I'm sure it'll happen again that some students do come back and audition and, and get into our program. And some of those have gone on to do really well in the professional world. And we've actually, especially during the COVID years when we were virtual, some of them alumni would come back and talk about what their life was like starting from pre-college and then ending up on Broadway or ending up in film or television. It's pretty cool. So um, I'm going to drop um, our email address that this email goes to Maria and I, and uh, I would love to tell you that we check it every single day, but when pre-college is not happening, um, we often forget for a couple of days, but we will be checking it more now that we've met all of you. And we encourage you to uh, write to us if you have any specific questions, or you can follow up with us in the breakout rooms after this. I think that's all we have right now, Marjorie. Everything else can be addressed later uh, in the breakout rooms. Okay, thanks so much, Val and Maria. Alex, um, do you wanna take it away? Sure, thank you. I'm gonna share my screen. I have some slides here. All right. So my name is Alex Barthar. I am program director for the Pre-College Music Program. Um, so I'll give a quick overview of the different areas of study we have, and then we'll take a look at what a typical day would look like for one of our students. Much like the drama program, we sort our students based on their interests into four different tracks. So you'll declare this on the application, whether you're here for instrumental study, vocal study, composition, or our newest major, music technology and electronic music. In addition to these four, we do have jazz studies as an option, but it isn't itself a major. Um, and the application requires different um, elements. So the instrumental majors need to submit a recorded audition, so do the voice majors. Composition and music technology students submit uh, digital portfolios or a statement expressing their interest. Our program also meets you exactly where you are right now. So we do have, um, we request that you have some experience on your instrument. So this isn't a complete beginner program, but you're here to learn, you're here to get that leg up as you prepare for your college auditions, if that's what your ultimate goal is. Here is a sample schedule for um, one of our voice students. The schedules, are very different depending on what major you are enrolled in. But all of our students take a core set of courses. Um, of course, major lessons, performing in our ensembles, and academic courses, including music theory, solfege, which is sight singing, and Dow Crow's Eurythmics. Um, we also have students enroll in music history and weekly convocations, which brings in guest performers and guest ensembles from Pittsburgh for all of our pre-college students. And then depending on the major, students take um, major specific courses. Our uh, voice students take dance um, and acting. Our music technology students would take music tech lab and recording techniques. Composers uh, take composers forum. And it's a busy schedule. Um, our students are here almost all day, Monday through Friday. Our program is modeled after what a freshman undergraduate student would take here at Carnegie Mellon. So that's why you're here all the time, whether you're in class or if you're in the practice rooms or doing your homework. Um, we're showing you what college life is like at this level. Here is our weekly course schedule. Um, so you can start to see how busy your day might be. Students are enrolled in obviously their required courses, but we do have space for electives. So if you're a voice major and you're really interested in music technology or recording, we can add those on space permitting in the schedule. Um, both this weekly schedule and that sample schedule are posted on our website if you wanna look a little bit more closely at them. We do have performances throughout the summer. Um, our main large ensembles are the Wind Ensemble, the Symphony Orchestra, Jazz Ensemble, and the Concert Choir. <clears throat> but we do have smaller ensembles based on what students are attending each year. So some years we have enough brass students to put together a group of those folks. 
guitar students, jazz choir, <clears throat> all of our opera, sorry, all of our voice students take opera workshop where they stage scenes. Um, it's a rigorous program. So at the end of these six weeks, we'll have performances of all of these ensembles. I mentioned the possibility of elective courses, um, but students can also enroll in elective lessons. These do carry an additional fee, but if you come here majoring in flute, uh, but have a lot of interest in composition, for instance, <clears throat> we can enroll you in composition lessons as well. And with those, you'll get a lesson um, each week, one hour lesson, in addition to your regular studies. Um, there are a few minor studios that are only available as a minor elective, uh, is not a major option. For instance, uh, jazz voice is something that any student can add on. Um, conducting lessons are an option as well. Okay, so here is our concert and events calendar. It is two pages because we have a six week program, um, but you can start to see the different sort of events that we have each week. So we have convocation with jazz performances and chamber ensembles. Um, and at the end of our first three weeks <clears throat> is the first of our concert days. We'll have an admissions information session um, with our folks from the music admissions office explaining what the process is like to apply for the undergraduate program here. Even if you're not necessarily considering CMU for your undergraduate degree, though we hope you will, um, they'll offer a lot of tips that would apply to other programs as well. Later that day, we have our first big concert with the Jazz Ensemble and Wind Ensemble. Marjorie mentioned earlier that the music program can be taken either, either as a three-week option or a six-week option. Um, Sometimes there's confusion around this topic. So uh, just to be clear here, the music program is set up as a six week program. Um, it's not a repeat in the second half. All of the performances or most of the performances are at that last week of the program. Um, we make the three week option available if you're busy later in the summer, maybe school starts or you have band camp coming up at the end or a family vacation. Um, so the three week option is available. Uh, but if at all you can make it possible, six week is where the deepest work gets done. And here is the second half of our summer. And you can see this last week of the program, students are very busy going from rehearsals to performances. Um, and I do want to highlight right here on that Thursday, we have conservatory auditions. And this is one of, I think, the most important parts of our program. Um, much like drama, we have all of our students go through a mock audition process. Um, composers will have a private interview with our composition faculty, music tech students, electronic music majors also have a portfolio review, and our instrumental students and <clears throat> um, voice students go through the process of walking out onto a stage and performing for a panel of jurors. It can feel stressful, certainly if it's going to be your first time, um, but our pre-college program gives you the opportunity to go through those steps here before it's time to do that for real um, as you're going through the college application process. And this picture that you're seeing here is beautiful. It's actually one of our performing halls and um, students perform there throughout the program. And here on our last slide um, is my contact information and our pre-college website, the music specific pre-college website. And any excuse to show off our facilities, I'll take. Uh, this is our great hall and it has a beautiful, um, it looks painted, but it's not actually painted, a beautiful ceiling and um, really nice architectural details. So this is where we study throughout the summer. Thank you, Alex. It really is a beautiful setting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Meg, if you would like to tell everyone a bit about the student affairs portion. Sure thing. Can you hear me? Sure can. I just want to be sure that I have successfully unmuted. Okay. So as Marjorie said, my name is Meg Pryor. I'm the assistant director of pre-college student affairs. 
Um, and this basically means my job is to focus on and support the student life side of the pre-college experience at CMU. And one of the things that I do think is special about um, our program um, is the opportunity to have a sort of a holistic, um, rounded experience of what of what the college experience would be, which definitely includes the amazing um, academic programs, but certainly also includes the student life part, um, the residential and um, sort of social student life part. So I supervise a staff of up to 60 undergraduate Carnegie Mellon students. And these students serve in the role of either community advisor or resident advisor. And they reside in the residential halls with the pre-college students. So they're able to provide 24 seven support to the students. I work collaboratively with them to deliver a robust and whole student experience providing a wide variety of activities for students to participate in outside of the classroom. We try to offer as many activities as possible. Um, all these activities are optional um, because these programs do require um, a, a lot of attention, um, but it is good to get a little time to explore Pittsburgh and to meet people and to um, build sort of a social network. So it is our hope that students participate in as many activities as they can successfully manage to fit into their schedule. This helps um, prepare students for their future studies by learning how to manage their time inside and outside of the classroom, as well as providing opportunities for making connections with other students and learning how to prioritize um, their, their calendar events. Some of the optional on-campus events that we have planned include a July 4th celebration with a pretty fantastic professional fireworks show on, on the mall right here on our campus. Um, we have social activities that are designed to provide opportunities to meet new people and to get to explore what the city of Pittsburgh has to offer. Students also have the opportunity to form their own clubs, which generally meet on a weekly basis, much like the undergrad experience. We have an acapella club every summer, and this club has the, um, the opportunity to perform the national anthem for a Pittsburgh Pirates game, which is the Major League Baseball team here in Pittsburgh. We've had everything from clubs uh, for knitting, for reading, for swimming, pretty much if, if you and um, some other people have an interest in something, you have the opportunity to form a club. We also offer off-campus opportunities for pre-college students to experience Pittsburgh and the surrounding region. We have a trip to Falling Water, which is a beautiful home designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. And we um, uh, sponsor a trip to a baseball game at PNC Park, which is the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. As a pre-college student um, at CMU, you're also provided with a bus pass, which allows you to access various areas throughout the Pittsburgh area. And you also have an arts pass that will allow you to visit local museums. Marjorie, if you can hit the next slide, please. Our pre-college residential students are housed in um, freshman dormitory, dormitories, all of which are air conditioned. We do aim to pair our residential pre-college students with a roommate from their academic program whenever possible. Um, it's not always possible, but we do try to um, do that as, as many times as we can. Um, however, the floors in the dorms are comprised of students from all across the programs. This provides students with the opportunity to meet and or interact with other students across the, the many various programs that we have going. Pre-college students also have access to most of the resources that are available to our undergraduate CMU student population. This consists of everything from Student Academic Success Center, um, which can assist with tutoring, uh, university health services, counseling and psychological services, our athletic facilities, study spaces, the Center for Diversity and Inclusion, and many more. Um, finally, I just want to close by saying that students in our pre-college programs are able to experience much more than classroom learning in a world-class academic environment. Our goal is to provide an opportunity to test drive the undergraduate experience, not only at CMU, but to prepare students for what they might expect when they start undergraduate studies, studies at most universities.
Thank you, Meg. Okay. All righty. So um, we have a little bit more to do. Uh, talk about before we get to the Q&A, pretty important part, the application. So the application is open. Um, it has been open since uh, late November. Um, and it is very much like a college application. Um, it is online. It's entirely online. You're going to open it up. There's thorough instructions. Please read those instructions carefully. Most of the questions we get from applicants actually are outlined in those instructions. So it kind of saves you a little time emailing us and getting a response back. Just go ahead and just carefully read those instructions. Um, I think you'll find them helpful. Um, you're gonna enter you know, your basic information, uh, your name, your address, all of those sorts of things. And then you're gonna come to a question um, that asks if you would like to be considered for scholarship consideration. You will get this question if you are a US citizen or US permanent resident. You will want to answer that question. It's always best to sort of answer the questions in the order that they are presented in the application because other information and other questions tear out from your particular answer. So please make sure that you, um, if you are a US citizen or US permanent resident, that you answer that question about scholarship consideration. So you'll get the correct options as you move through the application. You will be asked for a first, second, and or third choice program. Um, we So it could be, if, if you are a vocalist, um, maybe your first choice is drama for music theater, but then you think music is a good option as well. So that's number two. So we will consider your application in the order that you, you list those program options. So if drama was first, we would first take a look at the application um, under sort of the, the drama lens, right? And make a decision there. If it is a deny, then it would move on to the second choice. So then you would get considered for music. So please be mindful of, if you are doing more than one program choice, please be mindful of the order in which you are listing them. You will need to submit um, your unofficial most recent transcripts. We, we'd like to see ninth grade and up. Um, up until the, the current semester, if at all possible. Even if that it is just listing your current courses that you're taking, that's also helpful. So please make sure it is your most recent, and but it can be an unofficial transcript. And that can mean that if your school, every, every school has a website now, right, a portal. If there's a screen that has the name of the school, um, has uh, the identifier, who you are, your information, and all of the courses and grades, you can do a printout of that, and that, that can count as an unofficial transcript. Test scores are optional. So the PSATs, SATs, there is a place where you can upload them, but it is truly optional. It does not count against you if you don't supply them, but it's there if you would like to share that information with us. There is also an area for extracurricular activities. That is optional but it is a really good idea to go ahead and, and fill that out. I'd say really in particular for drama and music, like they're wanting to understand where you're coming from. What is your creative background? How are you spending your time? So we can learn a lot about you through that extracurricular activity area. So, and if that means you have a job that takes up um, a large amount of your time, please put your job down. That says something about you as well. So, um, please consider filling out the, the activities section. There is um, There will be essays that are required and word counts are specific to each individual program. You will have at least one essay that will be about attending a pre-college program in general. So it's more of a generalized um, essay. And then depending on the program you're applying to, you could have one or more essays that you need to um, complete for that as well. All of the prompts are already, they're obviously in the application, but you can also find them on our website on the each, each academic program's individual webpage. Um, if you have a first, second, and third choice program, please be aware that you will need to write essays for all of the program choices. So that is something that um, you might need to prepare for. One letter of recommendation is required from a teacher or a counselor. Um, you request the recommendation through our online portal. So you're just going to come to a portion in the um, application 
you're going to submit, you're going to enter in your recommender's name, how you know them, just some the contact information, just a few bits of information about them. And our system then automatically sends them an email. So it's a really one touch process for you. You just give us the information and then we reach out to them. I will say, although it is an, a, a one touch process for you, it's always a good idea to stop by, um, let them know that it's coming. So they're watching for it in their email, you know, please and thank you go a very long way. So that's, that's my little extra tip there. Some programs will require portfolio um, materials. Um, music does. Um, drama, I think you discussed that, but we can get uh, deeper into that um, in the breakout room, sort of what the portfolio material should be. And for scholarship consideration. So at the one of those first questions, if you say yes, you wanna be considered for scholarship, you will need to uh, provide additional information, financial information about the household. So that can be in the form of a tax form 1040, or it can be a NACAC application fee waiver. So this fee waiver is commonly used at the undergraduate level. You can find links to it all over our website and all through the application. Uh, we try to make it really easy to find. It's just a form that you print out. You will take it into the school and have a school official take a look. Um, fill it out, and then they make an assessment of economic need at the local level. So, uh, and then you just bring it home and you upload it into the application. That is sometimes the easier option um, than digging up your uh, tax, form 10, tax form 1040. Um, please make sure when you are filling out the financial section of the application, please make sure that you fill out all of the required fields it would be a shame to disqualify yourself by not including some required information. So please uh, take your time and make sure you are uh, entering that information accurately and completely. And then uh, my last tip on the application is that we need all of the materials uploaded into the system before that submit bus button will even work. So you need the recommendation letters in, you need the portfolio to be submitted, you, you need your essays uploaded. All of that needs to be entirely uploaded into the system to be able to submit the application. So there's some things you might want to plan ahead for and, and think about. So I'll just quickly review our program dates. Our opening day is Saturday, June 22nd, 2024. So that's the date that you need to be 16 years of age by. I got it right this time. Um, the next day is orientation day, so that's Sunday, um, and it is important that all students are there for those two days because we do have activities that are important, sort of the groundwork for the program is laid those two days. The first day of classes will be Monday, June 24th, and then if you are in a three-week program, it would add your last day of class would be June 12th, and then the six-week program, the last day is August 2nd. And I, obviously I, I have listed here the other end dates for the other program lengths, but we'll just stick with the three and six weeks right now. The move out day is always the Saturday after the last day of classes at 2 p.m. So your last day of class, if you, it, hopefully you're staying with us the full six weeks, um, would be Friday, August 2nd, that'd be your last day of class. And then August 3rd, you would need to move out, make plans to move out of the dorms by 2 p.m. that day. So the application deadlines that you need to be aware of. Our first deadline is February 1st, and that is for early decision and international applications. And those are both rolling decisions. If you are an early decision applicant, that does not bind you to the decision. That is really just our um, encouragement to get your application in earlier because some of our programs um, can close the application earlier. Uh, if if they're, uh, they have their full enrollment and they have a robust waiting list, we, we don't want to, um, we don't want to waste your time having you fill an application when there's really not a spot available. So we close the application. So if you get an application in by the early decision, we don't have problems with that. We've, I've never seen the application close before the early decision deadline. So that's really just the prompt to kind of get on it and get that application in so you get your best chance of getting into your, your program of choice. 
International applicants also have a February 1st deadline because there's sometimes some extra paperwork documentation that we have to work through. So we need a little extra time to, um, to work through all of that. So those applications are also due February 1st. Those decisions for early decision and international, you will be notified of your decision by February 29th. And again, it's a rolling decision. So as a decision is made and we try to review them um, within a week of receiving them and move them on to the, the second review committee. So within two weeks, we hope to have decisions on all applications. You'll get that decision as soon as it's made. Uh, for the second deadline, the, the of and most, not most important, but pretty important, it's, it's March 1st because it's the final deadline. We, we don't take any applications after that. Um, so that is, uh, March 1st, so that's the regular decisions, so the final decisions, but then also for the scholarship applications. Now the scholarship applications work a little bit different. So the regular decision that's also rolling, so when you get the decision, when you get the application in, we make a decision and we give you that decision. For scholarships, we hold all of our decisions until April 5th. So we get all the whole pool of application scholarship requests by March 1st. We take the next month, we take a look at all of them, see, look at the funding, what we can distribute, who, who we can award uh, scholarships to, and then we let everyone know on April 5th. So whatever the whenever you get your decision, whether it's April 5th or if it's on the rolling, you have seven days to reply to that admittance. So you'll go into your student portal, you just accept it through your portal, and if there is an enrollment deposit, you would pay it through that as well. Um, there is a mailing list and we send out uh, updates uh, on deadlines, reminders, and application tips through our mailing list. So you can find our mailing list uh, button, uh, portal, I guess it is, our portal on our website. So I'd suggest taking a look at that, make sure you get our, your name in our system so that you can get those reminders. So we are finally at the Q&A portion of the evening. I am going to, the information you see, now, see on your screen now, all of our contact information, I'm gonna pop that into the chat so you can cut and paste that out if you would like. Um, and then we are going to, let's take about 10 minutes um, or until the questions wane where we just talk as a group. Um, so perhaps you are a vocalist, in my example from earlier, and you're not sure whether music theater or the music program is the right choice. This is a great time to hear from both of our program um, programs, and so you can make that determination. So I'm going to stop sharing. I will get this information to you, and let's open it up for Q&A. Feel free to, you can just call your question out, raise your hand, or pop it in the Q&A. I'm going to just start it out. I'll break the ice. So that's my question. I, let's pretend like I can really sing, which would be lovely. But I don't know. I like to be on stage, but I also really like to, like, which route should I go? Look, maybe both of the, all, both programs can speak to that. I would say that you should decide what kind of performance you're interested in. Um, the music program is focused more on opera. We're focused more on Broadway style. Um, that's probably a good indicator. Alex? That's exactly it. Yeah. So our lessons focus on uh, classical singing, diction, and we also have choir and opera workshop. And we have song coaching. We have a musical theater repertory elective. We have private voice lessons, but you're also going to be getting the dancing and the acting to turn you into a true CMU triple threat. <laughs> So come on, Marjorie, sign up for some lessons. I want to hear you sing. <laughs> oh boy, don't tempt me now. <laughs> um, okay, then I'm going to ask, I'm going to lob another one over. So is this like a camp? I just, I'm a student. I just, is this just going to be a fun summer? I'd love to hear both of your responses to that. Because sometimes there's confusion. I would, I would not call our program a fun summer camp. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't have fun while you're here, but you're going to work hard. 
and it's rigorous. And we have high expectations about attendance. If you uh, don't come to class one day without any explanation, we will call you and try to get you into class. I mean, we don't see the point of spending money like this to come to this program if you're not going to be there to get what we offer. And so uh, attendance has been a problem in years past and we are always looking to address it. I think you really need to be seriously committed to wanting to learn. Um, it's There's fun in games on the weekends and there's, there's lots of fun in class, but it is, um, it's rigorous. Okay, Alex, you want to answer that? Same, yep, same for music. So we do have a lot of fun, but as I was mentioning in my presentation, we model our program as closely as we can as what a freshman would do here at Carnegie Mellon. It's the CMU experience. You're in the, the same rooms as our undergrads, a lot of the same faculty, the same expectations. We do know that you're high schoolers, um, so we're not going to be unreasonable, but we have high standards and we'll meet you where you are and push you to that next level. Okay, so I have a question here. Um, what is the availability of your practice rooms? You're getting that question early. We get that question a lot. Um, so the music facilities, we have wonderful practice rooms. They've recently been renovated. They all have pianos in them, either um, acoustic pianos, Steinways or Yamahas, or really high quality uh, digital keyboards, which you can plug right into and get different sounds from. Um, but these facilities are limited to our enrolled music majors. Um, so all of our students will have swipe card access to them. And we also make these facilities available to students enrolled in elective lessons from outside of our program. So it's not always possible that a drama student, for instance, would be able to enroll in private trumpet lessons. Um, but you could try, and depending on your schedule and our schedule, um, we might be able to set that up to get you access to the practice rooms. I know this session is for drama and music, but we have a lot of students from other programs, computer science, um, uh, the uh, design and architecture folks that are able to work in elective music lessons and then get access to those practice rooms. Yeah. Uh, that, we can open up our facilities, but there are a couple of places on campus, um, Marjorie or Meg, maybe you can speak more about that, <clears throat> where students can get access to either sign up for a time or just have open access to some of those spaces to practice or uh, jam with friends. Yeah, Meg, do you want to talk about the um, spaces in the residential halls or where you've seen students go to practice? Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 I am still learning the, the dorms myself to know um, completely, but um, I know that there are uh, practice spaces available um, in Warwood Gardens. Um, and uh, there are certainly spaces that um, our students have used as practice spaces or as just places to uh, jam with other um, uh, students or residents that, that play instruments as well. Um, I have a question here. Um, so, so I mentioned that during the application process, uh, you can list three choices. Does that mean I have to do the essays and the other required things? Yes, you do. So um, you need to write essays if they're required and if portfolios are required, you'd have to complete those as well. So yes, that's why you wanna pause and make sure you're interested in all the programs. Um, what type of dance do you focus on in the acting class for the music voice majors? I can answer that. Um, so we bring in a couple of folks from a local dance company in town, Attack Theater, <clears throat> and they structure it to give an overview of different styles of dance. So they'll touch a little bit on ballet. Um, they'll touch on modern and other types of movement uh, over the six week program. So it's not incredibly deep work in any of these. We only have six weeks to go through it all, uh, but students will get a little bit of a taste of each of these styles. And then I have, I'm so sorry. And then a, also a correction. She wanted to know also about the dance class in the, in the same capacity for music voice majors. 
Oh, I'm sorry. That's what I answered. Did I misunderstand? Oh, you did? Oh, I thought I said acting. No, then that's right. I oh, heard. yes. Our, our, um, yeah, yeah. Dance yeah. majors take dance where you touch on different styles throughout. Okay. Okay. I probably said it wrong. Apologies. It's okay. Um, our voice majors also take an acting class, um, <clears throat> but it's specifically designed for acting in scenes, in opera scenes, or acting during um, vocal solos. Yeah, I mistyped. And so it was acting. You didn't read it wrong. but then oh, I said that, You're good. You're good. Thank you. <laughs> it's a good question. So, so um, you're talking about theater or are you talking about in the music program? Music program. I got the answer I was looking for. Thank you. Um, okay. I have a question here. For example, I'm an instrumental major, piano. And during the application, I decided to also add composition and vocal. Does that mean I have to compose music and upload um, them singing? So I think that I would say the question, Alex, is what portfolio are you looking for? In the application, you have to choose one, uh, one of these tracks, whether it's instrumental, voice, composition, uh, music text, slash electronic music. And that's the portfolio we're going to expect to see. <clears throat> Um, once you are admitted into the program, then there's a little bit more flexibility once you decide on what electives you would like, which might include if you're enrolled as an electronic music, music major, you are interested in composition, you enroll in composition lessons. Um, in all of the minor studios, in all the minor elective lessons, um, it's any level that you come in with. So if you've never composed before and sign up for elective composition lessons, you'll have beginner lessons in composition. Um, I'm actually the composition teacher as well. So you'd be taking lessons with me. Um, but the major that you are declaring this focus in your application is the one that we're going to be most closely looking at. Please express those interests um, in your application, in your essay. If you want to show us that you're a great pianist in addition to your music tech work, I'd love to see it. Um, but the specific track that you've mentioned and specified in your application is what we'll be looking at most closely. So let me ask you, because um, with three choices and both drama and music, you can both answer. So you could actually, because you have tracks, could a person put drama, 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 and then first choice, it is acting track, second choice is music theater, and third is DP. Um, same with music. How do you all feel about that? Is that? Does that show you that you're super flexible and you just, you wanna be a part of the CMU program? Just your thoughts. That's fine with us. <laughs> we don't mind if you haven't even made up your mind yet exactly what you want to focus on, this is a great opportunity to do that. And, and same also, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say that the same thing for, <laughs> we're going to fight Marjorie, watch out. Uh, <laughs> the same for music. So please specify uh, multiple tracks if you're interested in multiple tracks. Since our program is rolling admissions, it's possible that you play the bassoon, but we've already admitted the allotment of bassoons available. Um, and in that case, we would go on to a second or third choice option in music. Does that answer the question, Marjorie? That's exactly what I was going to point out. Yes, yep. <laughs> that, that, that it's they're like the track component adds an element to the first, second, and third choice. Yeah. Um, all right. Question. Do recommendations have to be from a teacher related to music drama or they can they be a teacher from a different subject? Maybe both programs could answer that, which you'd like to see. I mean, for drama, they can be a teacher from a different subject as long as they can like speak to your work ethic. Um, it's helpful if you have someone that's worked with you in a creative capacity before, um, like a creative writing teacher or an English teacher, something like that, but somebody that can, you know, definitely speak to your your interests and your commitments in theater. For music, the strongest recommendations would come from either your band teacher or choir teacher, or if you're taking private lessons, your private instructor. It's really unusual that a student would be admitted to the program without a recommendation from one of these teachers that's worked closely with you in music. Um, 
we welcome other types of letters if it shows uh, your work ethic or your passion, but specifically we're looking for your music references. Okay, I'm going to, uh, we've got great questions in the q and I'm going to answer in the group the ones that would apply to both programs. And then I think we'll do the breakout rooms um, and you can ask those specific questions to the program directors. Um, but I'm gonna answer the question is, I'm planning on applying for both the music program and summer sessions, so two programs. Would I need to write two of the, what do you want to gain from the first general um, essay? Do I have to write that, that, that essay twice? No. You just have to, to do it once. No, we won't make you do it twice, but thank you for asking. Um, we would have a lot of reading. I'm not sure we could keep up with it if we if we had you do it twice. And then let me see. Um, okay, I think the rest of the questions are really program specific. So I think we'll go ahead and break out into the breakout rooms. Marjorie. Um, Yes, yeah. Sorry, I, there is one. I am technically a junior in high school, but I plan to have enough credits to graduate this year, June 2024, but that disqualify me from this summer's pre-college program. Um, let's, can you hang back in the um, this room, Zoom room, and we'll talk about that so that I can understand the situation um, that's anonymous. So anonymous, if you could hang back and, and we can, I can talk to you about that if that works for you. Um, so right now I'm going to break out, in, we're going, going to open up the rooms. There's three breakout rooms, two are for drama. There is one for drama workshops and then one drama academics. You can move in between the rooms as you want. You will pick your own room. And then Alex will be in a room for music. So I am going to go ahead and open up those rooms. Um, the program directors will close each of the breakout rooms as they see fit. Um, or by 8.30 at the latest, I would imagine. But uh, on behalf of pre-college programs, uh, I guess Meg and I are saying goodbye now. We wanna thank you for taking the time um, to hear more about our programs this evening, investing this evening, um, this evening for us, this time with us. And really, if you have any other questions, please reach out where we are here. That's what we are here to do is answer your questions. And we really hope that we see your application. And even more than that, we hope that we see you here next summer. So thank you um, for all your time and effort. And I will open up the breakout rooms. You should see that a, them pop up on the screen. If you do not, you can call out and tell me where you wanna go and I can assign you.